Live from Rain Spell Studios in North Hollywood, California, it's the Final Mix Show, the only radio podcast dedicated to educating you on the ins and outs of the music industry. And now, here's your host, John Mahoney. All right. Thanks, Ken. Welcome to another episode of The Final Mix. Sitting in with me, as always, is my co-host, Mickey Finn. Hey, John. How are you? And tonight, people all day, they have not believed me. They said, no way. It's too big. But we got him here, Mr. Leon Hendricks, the brother of uh, Jimi Hendrix. Welcome, Leon. Welcome, welcome. Wow, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, let's just cut right to it. I'll, I'll, I'll ask right. what I think is on everybody's mind. Okay. Um, what the heck was it like growing up as Jimi Hendrix's brother? I mean, you got to see things that, like yeah. When I was an infant? All of it. And Jimmy was practicing on a broom. How many years are you behind him? Four. Four, okay. So big brother Jimmy must have been inspirational. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it might not have started out that I, way. I, I, thought, I thought he had lost his mind. <laughs> <laughs> so he started playing guitar before you. Uh, what did you think when he st- first started playing guitar? Well, I didn't really think of anything except for that he was like, the one that was taking care of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, my dad went to work or whatever he, whatever he did. Jimmy was in charge of me. Mm-hmm. So I had to go everywhere Jimmy went. Mm-hmm. And I went to see his first uh, concerts. I mean, not concerts, but you know, we're in Seattle. And I remember his first job was with Ray Charles. Wow. No, nobody knows that. Very interesting. Ray Charles was lived in Seattle for a while. He mm-hmm. played at the penthouse uh, down in Pioneer Square. And he hired little Jimmy, I think he was like 16, wow. to play. That's how good he was mm-hmm. wow. at the time. Very After cool. He was playing in the Ray Charles, Charles Band when he did yeah. shows in Seattle. That was his first job. Wow. That he got paid for. All right. Amazing. Yeah. Excellent. How many other uh, brothers and sisters are there? Well, I have a, a little brother. His name is Joey. Mm-hmm. And then I have some uh, other sisters that I never met because my father kind of, you know, after he got divorced from our, from our mother, uh, I never met him. I, mm-hmm. I've met one in all these years. Okay. You know, a lot, a couple of the sisters don't want nothing to do with us. Right, right. Because, you know, they were, you know, they got their lives and they're happy with what they're doing. And how old was Jimmy, like, when it was like, oh, my God, this is like my brother has made it kind of thing? Uh, did it sneak up on you, or did you see it coming? Okay. If I want to start early childhood when Jimmy's playing the broom mm-hmm. and playing air guitar to Chuck Berry and Elvis Presley, um, I didn't I didn't think not enough of it and didn't give a damn. Mm-hmm. Come on. Right. You know, just a kid having fun. Yeah, right, right. And so, uh, and then uh, I used to bug him so much as a child that he tied a pencil around my wrist and made me draw. Mm-hmm. I ended up working for Boeing's right. as a draftsman right. because of that. That was better than a college education. Mm-hmm. I've yeah. seen some of your artwork, and it is uh, it is really great. Um, where can people go to to check that out if they if anyone listening to this? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> I I have all these websites, but I'm so busy touring and playing music and trying to write new songs that uh, I kind of like let them handle it. Right, mm-hmm. right. So uh, I guess you can go on uh, face Facebook. I got like I started with one page and I got like. 30. <laughs> or you can go to the, the HendrixFamily.com. I got over 2 million. Mm. Uh, and you can go on, uh, what's the other? Space Out? What's, My, what's, MySpace? Yeah, there you go. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. You can go on MySpace. Mm-hmm. But all these, all these, all these uh, websites are not generating uh, the right thing for my career. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm going to have to you know, give it over to a giant company that knows how to extract. Come, come on, I got millions of people on my website. Right. I need to get it like 50 cent. Right, yeah, I hear you. You know, yeah, yeah. I could, 
You know, I'm, mm-hmm. come on. You know, so I can eat. No, right. I'm not. I'm, I'm playing. I, I've never missed a meal. Right. <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, what What are you up to right now? Like, what are you really working on, or what's your focus? Uh, okay, I got uh, three albums out. I'm keeping it to myself because the record companies don't want to give me no money for them. Mm-hmm. They want to give me a, a this press and distribution deal, and then uh, then they want to make a video, and then they want to do in-house reproductions. So I'm going to come out of there owing money. Yeah, right. And I don't want to owe no money. I'm yeah. I'm happy right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to keep on making my music, uh, and eventually. You know, they're going to recognize. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, do you have any uh, tours or anything coming up that uh, yeah. we should know about? Well, I just got back from Italy, Switzerland, and France. Nice. And now I'm going to Turkey. No, wait a minute. Greece, Turkey, Russia, back to Germany for Oktoberfest, mm-hmm. to London for Jimmy's birthday party, to New York City for Jimmy's birthday party. Wow. And then back to Seattle for Jimmy's birthday party. Uh-huh. <laughs> All in three days. Yeah. You, you find Europe to be uh, more productive these days than America? Oh, hell yeah. Americans, yeah. Americans expect too much because we've lived too good. Yeah, we're spoiled, you know? yep. Exactly. You know? They say, you know, I played the Whiskey, Roxy, Viper Room, House of Blues. Nobody gives a fuck. Mm-hmm. But when I go to Europe, I sell out. Yeah. You know, People my, appreciate good music over there and more. And that's yeah. what happened to Jimmy. Jimmy had to leave here to become famous, you know? Right, right. Absolutely. Uh, so we're going to get to a little of your music here in a minute, but uh, let's talk about your first album, Keeper of the Flame. Uh, what, what was the process of that, and how, uh, how was your experience with that? Did you, was that an enjoyable album that you did? It's always enjoyable when you make a fucking album, mm-hmm. okay? And that's not my first album. My first album was uh, Seattle, called Seattle Rain with Ricky Phillips from uh, Styx. Uh, Alan White from... Uh, yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> because White. they go, hey, Leon, you know who I am? Mean? Go, <laughs> up, up. <Yeah. laughs> and, then, um, and then Tony Coleman mm-hmm. from B.B. King and Ian Gillian. Uh, wow. who sung backup vocals for me. Wow, amazing. And he didn't even charge me. He goes, Leon, I know you're just getting into the business. I just want to put some purple in it. So, <laughs> you know, so nice. he did it. You know, I got a lot of friends out there, you know. Mm-hmm. Did uh, you and Jimmy do shows together back Damn, in the day? What are you talking about? Come on. Jimmy's on tour. He 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 sent for me. I, I flew from Seattle to California in 1960. What seven mm-hmm. or something like that? You know, I wasn't you know interested in music at all. Mm-hmm. But this is when Jimmy flipped my life, right? Because yeah. you know he used to call me from New York. You know, he said, "Leon, listen to this, listen to this this song. I'm do it. I'm going. You know, and we only had landlines in them days, right? Right. And so uh, I would put the phone down. And do my business and come back like 20 minutes later, he's still playing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> How you like that? I'm going, well, for one thing, I I can't really hear it. Right. I'm sure it was all blazing and distorted on the And phone. I go, hey, Jimmy, mate, you might want to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm exaggerating. But, right. But I wasn't really interested, mm-hmm. you know, because my dad had, had uh, been so, he was condemned Jimmy for playing guitar. So he kind of, that kind of went to my attitude too. Mm-hmm. And then I, m- I remember one time I asked my dad, I said, I want a guitar. He said, I already got one idiot <laughs> playing guitar. Oh. I'm not having two, <laughs> you know, I'm going. So, so my guitar history canceled for like 40 years. Mm-hmm. You know, I just started playing like 10, 11 years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess I'm just a late bloomer, you know. Yeah. I guess it's just in the blood that music is in our blood, and uh, I'm, that's all I got. All right. Who were your uh, musical influences growing up? Jimmy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Muddy Waters, Robert Johnson, mm. uh, Bo Diddley, because we used to listen to his records. You know, when they had the big giant. Right. See, people don't know that. 
they had a bigger record than the 78. Right. Remember that one? Yeah. It was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of record player did yeah. they make yeah. to put that on? So that's what you that's what you listen to, blues. Uh, he, lo- he loved Chuck Berry. He loved uh, Elvis Presley. Cause he would emulate them all the time. Mm-hmm. He'd be all in the room, up on the bed, bouncing up, playing air guitar and stuff. And but his his famous, his most famous uh, group was uh, Mickey and Sylvia. Right. You guys probably never heard of them. Yeah, I haven't heard. I haven't heard. They're that the one. first black people that were able to be allowed to be on TV. Wow. wow. Love is strange. Yeah. Remember that song? Mm-hmm. Love is strange. You know. Because uh, what happened was like early in the fifties, uh, although all the black people wrote all the music, right? White people were performing, right? Right, people were performing them. Yeah, because you know. Yeah, well, that went on with Little Richard and and everybody exactly. that that you know, came up exactly. big after that. So. It's all good now. Mm-hmm. You know. And how about later, uh, leading up to starting to play guitar and starting your music career? Who influenced you besides Jimmy? Uh, Metallica. Oh, nice. You know, I got, you know, uh, and you know, I'm from Seattle. Mm-hmm. So, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden. Right. Interesting, nice. Alice in Chains. Mm-hmm. See, I knew these guys when they were kids. Right. They used to skateboard around Jimmy's grave when I used to go visit Jimmy. Mm-hmm. And they said, we're going to be rock and roll stars one day. I said, really? oh, okay. That's a cool story. Okay. But I know one thing. Uh, you need to quit picking them joints off of Jimmy's tombstone and quit smoking them. <laughs> because every time you go to you yeah, know, Jimmy's grave... I've heard that. People pile stuff there, right? Guitar picks, big fat doobies from Jamaica. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Poems. Uh-huh. All that kind of stuff. It, it's, it's been, you know, it's it's pretty cool. Well, listen, you know, uh, we want to get to some music yeah, let's hear uh, some that you Leon played. Uh, the first song is called Flight 93. Tell us a little bit about uh, Flight 93 about was a song that I wrote that uh, that was like an anthem for uh, those people that was on Flight 93 and they were supposed to crash into the White House. Mm-hmm. And instead, they got together and said, hey, right. fuck you, yep. motherfuckers. Uh they you took know, charge of the plane. We're right? taking charge of the plane, mm-hmm. and that's why these. This is a funny story here. That's why uh, none of these uh, terrorists ever went to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You get on a plane because too many niggas in Atlanta. <laughs> niggas don't go for that shit. They're like, "Fuck you, motherfucker." <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I might. No, no, you're. No, I don't want to say that word because no, Alan Sharpe's going to call me. No, it's a <laughs> podcast. You can say whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's going to call me and go. But see. Niggas is okay, because right. I am one. Mm-hmm. You know, so I can say about it. But anyway, that's why they never went to Atlanta, because it was like... Right. <laughs> but anyway, this is a song about those people. It's called, I wanted to call it Let's Roll, but then I got so many calls that I couldn't call it Let's Roll, because that's what the people on the plane were saying. Mm-hmm. So I had to call it Flight 93, and... And that's what you're going to hear right now. All right. This is Flight 93 by Leon Hendricks.
children's need love Cause my children But I can't go down like this I'm not coming home Let's roll Let's roll I wanted bagpipes in that. Yeah, I play nice. bagpipes. I wanted it. 
you know, because I was going to ask you that. Irish. It's like Irish. That's so because I well, I got to interject. I during that was like hearing bagpipes. I could hear bagpipes yeah. in that, and I was like, should I bring it up? I'm like, no, he'll yell at me and go, "Are you high? Yeah, <laughs> you're no, fucking the, crazy." That's the Irish death march. That melody. Yeah. Well, last name's Mahoney. And played wanted, bagpipes since I was and eight. I, I would be. But we couldn't find nobody. Right here, buddy. <laughs> bagpipes on that <laughs> track. Okay, bagpipe here comes guy. a remix. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you also? You were also singing that. Yeah. Now, is that available on iTunes? Can people go buy that? I. You know, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> but you know something. If I you, love that. If, <laughs> well, I don't because everybody's like in control of my shit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And um. It's on sale on my website, leonhendricks.com, the okay. whole album. Okay. okay. Uh, and the name of the album, once again? Is Keeper of the Flame. Keeper of the Flame. Okay. Mm-hmm. Go buy it on Leon's site. Yeah. <laughs> Good okay. stuff. Good stuff. Uh, and, and how it, many tracks? 10 it, tracks? 12 tracks? 10 tracks. 10 tracks. Just 10 tracks. And you know something? If you write me personally, you know, I'll send it to you for free. You just do shipping and handling. Wow. That's a good offer. Wow. There you go. So, where's your favorite place to play live? Is there a certain town that you think the fans town, are, city, country, are really the best? Club, that stage, bring it? Europe. All right. <laughs> Anywhere in Europe? Which, what's your fer- f- favorite place in Europe? Italy, France, Germany, mm-hmm. uh, England. I haven't been to Spain yet, but I'm going. Yeah, that should be good. And I'm on my way to Turkey, Greece, and Russia. Nice, nice. First Come time back. to Russia, or yeah, first time to Russia. I heard yeah, that. that should be great. They might give you half the money, but then that's all you get, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. And then from there, I'm going to uh, Oktoberfest in Germany, London for Jimmy's party, New York for Jimmy's party, and then Seattle for Jimmy's party. Now, is that like three all days in, in a row, or yeah, three days in a row? Okay, great. I'm on jet lag. It doesn't make no difference. Dude. Yeah, yeah. You know, I throw a, a Valium down, and I'm like, sleep on the plane. I wake up, ready to play. <laughs> right, nice, <laughs> very cool. Do you have like a, uh, a a most memorable show or experience in the music business so far? A certain show you played, or uh, anything like that? My most, no, not at all, because I'm still searching for that. Uh, is when I went on tour with Jimmy in the 60s. Mm-hmm. That was when my whole life changed. Because I'm like, I dress gangster. Jimmy's like psychedelic guru. And from that day on, that's when, you know, because he gave me some clothes. He said, hey, Leo, wear this shit. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, don't come to the whiskey right? <laughs> looking like that tonight. <laughs> you know, so you saw me? Jimmy at the whiskey? Yeah, I was on tour. I was on wow. tour with Jimmy for like fifteen. days. Because a lot of people talk about that. I mean, you, you talk yeah. about the whiskey. You talk about Hendrix played here. We had our own table, dude, and yeah. and, and to this day, I still got that same table. Mm-hmm. And then, like, when I want to go to the Rainbow Room, mm-hmm. the old guy Mario still right. remembers Jimmy, <laughs> and right. I didn't have to introduce myself. And he says, "I remember you." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I love it. Nice. That's my most memorable musical experience, and I'm still waiting for it to write the uh, the symphony of the century, you know, because I have these symphonies in my head, but I don't know how to bring them to earth mm-hmm. because I only have a guitar mm-hmm. and a piano. You know what I'm talking about? It's like heavenly music, right. and when I dream about Jimmy, he plays this such uh, amazing music that's mm-hmm. not it's ethereal. It doesn't belong on earth because. If I could produce it, I would, but I can't. <laughs> right. So I'm just going to do my simple shit, right. you know, my rock and roll and, you know, stuff like that. You still, you still making art? Yeah, of course. I listen. If I ain't playing guitar, I'm painting on the walls. Right. And sometimes, if there's no walls or no brushes, no paint, I play guitar. Mm-hmm. It's like it's called inspiration. It come. It's like the wind. Right. It kind of flows by. If you don't grab it, it just misses you by. Right. You know, so I at least I got two options. Mm-hmm. I got guitar or art. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever happens. Sometimes I don't have a guitar, and so I paint on the yeah, wall. That's a beautiful thing. You know, were you at uh, Woodstock when Jimmy played? No. Okay. 
<laughs> Next question. Um, <laughs> what, what do you want people to know about Leon Hendricks that they might not know? I don't care. I, I, <laughs> I'm like in this job. I'm like destined to do this. I have no choice. I'm compelled. I'm right. like fuck. You know. Sometimes I'm, I'm possessed. I'm going. What? Sometimes I I walk up on the stage and there's like ten thousand people out there, and I go, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> have I lost my fucking mind? They're expecting me to play like Jimmy Hendrix tonight. Right. Right. You know. But then. It it works out. It happens. Oh, uh, because Lights, I it's camera I action. A couple of Jimmy stuff. You know the old classics. Get them mm-hmm. warmed up. You right. know all on the watchtower. Hey Joe, I call it Hey Jimmy. Mm-hmm. I got a new version. Right. And um, Red House. Right. And then then I get to play a bunch of shit, and then we play a bunch of other shit. But I've learned that you need to hit them on the first song. And hit them on the last song. Sure, win them over. Everything in between, they forgot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. It's called the first note right, and yeah. the last fucking note. I good advice, it. good advice. I'm sorry, if I, I'm sorry if I'm getting upset, you guys. No, right? not at you all. You got me preaching now. Play we love be, it. We love it. Started. Play your best two songs, first and last. <laughs> and your fans are just crazy, like wait in the rain hours at a time uh, just for an autograph kind of thing. Well, Lying around the block. Well, because... Um, you know, I you know I go on tour with a bunch of famous bands like uh, Steppenwolf and Fog and stuff like that, and now they don't want me to play with them no more because I kind of upset their whole agenda because they were the headliners. Really? Oh, okay. You know, and uh, I remember one time uh, I had a good fucking night, dude. Mm-hmm. My guitar player broke his guitar, so it was all on um, fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> right. A trio. Right. So I kicked in the Red House. It was the best fucking guitar work I've ever done in my life because I had to help. I said, help me, Jimmy. Nice. Help me, Jimmy. And so uh, and when I was done playing, half the people in the audience ran up to the side of the stage while Foghat's playing to right. get my autograph and stuff like that. So they said, Liam, mm-hmm. you can't open up for us and you can't have signed autographs until after the whole show. All right. Stealing you know? the show, huh? Well, no, I didn't steal it. That's what they thought, though. Well, come on. Come on. There's, right. there's new music coming. Yeah. Yep. You know, and I think I'm I'm one of those. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of new music, uh, let's go and hear another excellent track from Mr. Leon Hendricks. Yeah. This one is called Me and Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy and Me. Jimmy and Me. <laughs> and and what, Tomato, what's this Tomato. track about? This Set is, it up for us. What's it is, about? This is uh, about... A song about me and Jimmy when we were growing up as little children. Nice. And we had to go through, uh, see our mother die and mm-hmm. and all kind of stuff. And this is just a song about that. Great. And Mama, you be proud today. All right. This is Jimmy and Me by Leanna Hendricks. <laughs> Sixteen, put food on the 
any means Oh, your girl is tired She said it's time we got Two boys to feed Thank you, mama Yeah, right on, mama Oh, brother, can you hear me? I can always feel you near me. I can feel your spirit in my soul tonight. I'm playing on. Okay, yeah, yeah. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. That was yeah, awesome. That was a great track. Very, very cool. <laughs> yeah. There's many more. Oh, nice. Uh, so, something uh, kind of funny happened uh, during that recording. I don't know if you uh, noticed the uh, attractive brunette in the other room. That is uh, one Sasha Valelli. Uh, <laughs> well, bring her in. Well, she has a she has a question. Uh, well, well, bring her in. All right, come on in here, Sasha. Ans- ask your question. Sasha. I had a Yasha, a Sasha, and what's that other one? And she wrote in parentheses, not kit or no joke, because. No joke. Okay, why don't you go on Mickey's microphone over there? You are Hi, looking Hello. good. Uh, oh. Get up on get up on that Hello. mic there. Hello. Hello. Don't be shy. <laughs> it's kind of a bizarre question, but. Um, uh, come on, I'm bizarre. <laughs> basically, uh, I've had a couple of dreams where. I've been visited by Jimmy. And, uh, <laughs> Jimmy likes that. He comes down all the time. Yeah. I, That's why I wanted to ask you if you'd I, ever like dreamed about him. Sorry to interrupt. No, I didn't dream about Jimmy coming to see me. Yeah. But I've had many girlfriends that said that Jimmy comes to them and has sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what I'm talking about? Because, come on. Did you have sex with Jimmy, Sasha? Um, Unfortunately, no. But, oh, okay. Well, sorry, I have a boyfriend. Husband. Well, it doesn't count. It's a dream. <laughs> it's a dream. It's fair I mean, game. No, no, that, that didn't happen. Okay. Maybe um, tonight could be the night. Maybe I segue too much. No, uh, we, were, we were at a party together. Okay. I was partying with him. Well, that's good. Yeah. Because, you know, Jimmy's like, he's omnipresent now. He can go get, you know, get a female anytime he wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure because does. no, I I swear to God, this is not no no bullshit. Many girls have told me the uh, same damn story. <laughs> so Jimmy's still busy out there. <laughs> That's very cool. But the now, Leon, lady, didn't didn't you say earlier? Lady. Didn't you say earlier though that J- that Jimmy had visited you in dreams and and plays yeah, beautiful play music. heavenly music not to have, you? Not having okay, sex. Why? <laughs> okay, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Come on, music. 
Different story. Right. That's cool. Excellent. Okay. So uh, it was like, <laughs> is, is it like one of those vivid dreams where when you say partying, like, you know, yeah, do you he like? Was, he was at a party. He was with some other girls, and I was just kind of hanging out, and I was like, hey, like, and he was just there, and it was really bizarre because I didn't know that I was going to meet you. So it, it was kind of bizarre that mm, baby, you know, it happened. No happened precious a while baby. Ago. Well, you know something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, oh, thank you for that. I told you hey, it was bizarre. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on, you guys. <laughs> that was just I'll a that was just a little detour. We're gonna get okay, back on okay. track. Yeah, get back to the serious. All right. All right. So, please. Jimmy, uh, <laughs> we try to make this an educational program for musicians wanting to come up. Awesome. You yeah. uh, you have a PhD in the music industry, as far as I'm concerned. What do you like about it? What do you hate about it? How's it changed over the last couple decades that you've been involved in it? Wow, that's like five fucking questions. I know. <laughs> Riff on that, on baby. <laughs> Let's start okay. and eat. For one thing, okay, let's get started here. For one thing, um, the music industry today is not going to actually give you money. Right. So what you have to do is you kind of have to adjust to it. You have to write stupid songs, simple songs, Jingles for cereal, you know, like Barry Manilow did, and get into the business. You know what I'm talking about? Because right now, um, I, but don't never uh, lose your dreams. Always play. I tell I, we have a thing called uh, the Hendrix Music Academy in Seattle, and we got these young babies, kids. You know, like genius kids, but they're they fell in school. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they're not academia. Right. They're artistic brain thinkers. They're blessed by God right. to be creative. You know, and, and the public doesn't really know that. So that's what we do in Seattle. And on the other hand, uh, for musicians, uh, you know, if you're a good musician, you know, do some resources. Uh, go on the internet. Get a network going. Because there's a lot of people out there on the internet that love music, and they're looking for that new music. Yeah, looking for something new and exactly. Different. And they're going to they're going to find it because the internet is a new world. Like even Jimmy taught me this. He goes, "Meet you in the next world. Don't be late." <laughs> you talking about the damn fucking internet, right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's all out there. Mm -hmm. And so I, I suggest that uh, you stay in school, get educated, uh, don't do drugs. Don't drink. Uh, just play your music. Follow your dreams, and you'll be successful. Yeah, and and as far as the uh, the jingles and that kind of thing, I think what you're getting at is music publishing is another it's avenue. You know, you can no. write your music, but you can also what it make is. music other ways. It's called the Mick Job. Right. Yep. It's, it's got to like pay the working bills. Working at McDonald's. Yeah. Okay. You got to do it to survive, right. and then you can, you know. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I just I'm getting started. <laughs> How do you feel about free downloads? Do you feel ripped off when that happens, or? Well, what can you do about it? You you want to worry about it? Right. You know, I want. You know, I'm 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 going out to all the you computer experts out there. I want you to. You can be a billionaire overnight if you can find out how to stop free downloads. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Billionaire, buddy. Yeah. And I want you working for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you, do you think we were in a better place when downloads weren't free and the major labels had control? Or do you think we're in a better place now that artists have more freedom to put out their stuff? Well, artists right now, if they, if they put out stuff and it gets played and you, you got up some people behind you selling you, it's all about marketing nowadays. Remember yeah. the Pussycat Dolls? Yeah. Yeah. You saw their posters for three years and never seen them. Right. What, what happened? Mm -hmm. When they came out? Yeah, they blew up. I, and, okay, it's about marketing. Mm -hmm. And um, I suggest that uh, keep writing your music, uh, but, but try to uh, get into the market, into the simplicity of the commercial music market that all the companies want right now. Mm -hmm. You know, mainstream stuff. You know, country western, no metal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> country western and pop rock and hip hop rule the industry right now. And you should go that, go in that direction. Mm. 
you know? Well, yeah. I guess if you want to make it easy on yourself, you can aim for that. No. There's also sticking to your guns and doing what makes you happy exactly. and, and not worrying about money if it happens. And if it you happens, don't want to do that, know? get a fucking job. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's a big job in the music industry or a big job on the street. Mm -hmm. So. You got to take your choice. Well said, and I think that's going to uh, do it for us tonight. Leon, thank you so much for hey, coming you guys, by. I love you guys. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Mickey Finn, Sasha Valelli, reminding you, believe in yourself, believe in your dreams, and remember, the only people who tell you that you can't do it are the people who have given up on their dreams. Good night.